بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أهل السنة والجماعة they love the companions of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم ولو كريا الكافرون ولو كريا المشركون ولو كريا الأهل بدع so أهل السنة we love the companions of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and this is in accordance with the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in accordance with the authentic traditions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And I wanted to share some of, the benef- some of the statements of classical scholars like Imam al-Tahawi rahimahullah ta'ala and Imam of Ahlu Sunnah and what he said in stating the Islamic creed which contradicts the religion of the Rafida. And the Rafida are those Shia groups who in fact, we're not, not even sure if it's accurate to call them Shia, but they are Rafida and they refuse the Islamic creed. In fact, they refuse Islam. So it's probably more befitting for them and their religion to uh, at least refrain from speaking about uh, Muslims and Muslim religion and Muslim creed as at least the Jews and Christians are more respectful in fact if you find in the West especially we find that Jews and Christians will at least be respectful in conversation if they have something to speak about your religion maybe they'll say it behind closed doors maybe they'll speak it out in the open but you usually find a degree of respect where at least they don't curse the uh, the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alayhim afdal salatu wa salam and they don't curse and uh, make takfir or decree the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'ala anu majma'in to be either wicked deviants or fasics or disbelievers no we don't have that that type of there's a type of respect that you find from them and that's why Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said uh, about the Rafida, he said, Akfar min Yahud wa Nasara. He said they have more disbelief, more kufr than the Jews and the Christians. Now let's see what Imam Tahawi said, Rahimallah Ta'ala, about them. He said, in stating and articulating the Muslim creed, he said, We love the companions of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but we do not go to the excess in our love for any one individual amongst them, nor we do we disown any one of them. We hate anyone who hates them and does not speak well of them. And we only speak well of them. Loving them is a part of Islam, part of belief, Iman, and a part of excellent behavior. While hatred of them is disbelief, hypocrisy, and rebellion. I'm just going to stop at that statement of Imam Tahawi, which is sufficient for us, to show that the hypocrisy and the kufr and disbelief and the evil conduct and manners that are related to a person who hates the companions of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who Allah chose to be his companions. So when you hate them, it is as if, is if you're hating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree, for one. And it's as if you're hating the judgment of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, number two. And it's as if you're hating the consensus of Ahl sunnati wal jama'ah, which is the ijma' of the ummah. That's number three. So then we wonder what kind of person could call themselves a Muslim after this. If they hate the, the, the judgment of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they're undermining as if he is not really a messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what they are, this is what is um, implied in their statement. And from this you find many of the Rafida. Some of them they worship Ali. Some of them they say the angel Jibreel made a mistake in the message. And that he cheated or he cheated the, the, the Ummah by giving it to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when it was really supposed to go to Ali Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu what kind of uh, I, I'm at a loss for words to describe what kind of deviance and what kind of ignoramus would claim such thing and these are from their scholars 
These are from the ulama. And inshallah ta'ala, we'll bring some of their textual statements because we have the books. Walhamdulillah. We have the books that go back to their usul, go to their creed. And that's why we will spend countless time for the sake of Allah to purify the ummah of this wretchedness, this evil, and to help those people who are in doubt about their Islam, who don't really know the difference, so that they are clear and that they know that those people, especially the learned ones from amongst them, mean you no good. They don't like Muslims. They don't like the Muslim creed. And matter of fact, some of them, they believe they re receive reward by lying and killing Muslims. And this is all born, born witness from their text and from Islamic, from the history, from history, world history. And in contemporary times, we find the situation being the same, especially in Iraq and Syria. So, it's imperative for us to know what is Islam? And it's imperative to know what does Islam say about the companions of the Prophet the people who, who were the wasila, they are the means for us to have the Islamic creed today. They are the means Allah preserved the Quran through them. And Allah preserved the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad through the companions. So ask yourself, if you are new to Islam, and people have invited you to a Shia gathering, or they've invited you to the Shia sect, I want you to be honest. First, seek refuge in Allah. Ask Allah for the truth. Say, hey, I'm, I'm, I don't know the difference. And I don't want to be confused. I want to go to paradise because that's why you came to Islam. Then begin to learn about their creed. And if they tell you about 12 imams, that these people are infallible, then you have to ask yourself, why did you leave the Christianity to come to that? Because they're calling you to the same thing. They're calling you to grave worship. They're calling you to worship Khomeini the Khabith. They're calling you to, uh, uh, to believe these people were infallible. These people are like prophets in that they know the knowledge of the unseen. Why don't you just go to a witch or a, 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 a soothsayer if that's the case? Because it's all the same thing. It will all lead you to the hellfire. And they will tell you to hate. What kind of a religion is that? That the, uh, the, the foundation is built upon hatred. Upon hatred of the people who are around the Messenger of Allah and his wives. These are the most purified people of the Ummah. These are the people who helped, who, uh, helped preserve the religion so that you and I would have this pristine religion. Why would you follow something if you don't believe in it? Why would you follow something if you don't think that it's true? If you don't think Islam is true, why, why, how can you say that you're a Muslim? If you, don't, if you believe the Qur'an is not the message uh, uh, to, to mankind. If you believe the Qur'an has contradictions or it has mistakes or it wasn't complete or that some people took some ayats out. What kind of Muslim are you? Ask yourself that. And come back to Allah. First and foremost, ask Allah. Don't believe me. Ask Allah. Pray about it. And come closer to your Lord and ask Him for the truth. And I guarantee you, Allah will guide you away from that, that, uh, that creed and that religion which is against Islam. We're Muslim and those person, people are Rafidah. And I wouldn't have anything to say if they were just Rafidah, if they're Sikhs or Hindus. Okay, at least those people have a respect for our, our, our traditions to a greater or lesser extent. They don't sit around and have gatherings and speak about the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam radiallahu ta'ala anhum in jama'in. So we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purifies the earth of this wicked creed, of those people who speak ill about the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have be pleased with all of them and bless them all with the highest status in Jannah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.